Hey guys, welcome to Concept and Coding, and this is Shreyansh. And today, in multi-threading, we are going to cover these two topics: atomic variables, and also we will see the difference with the volatile, and also the con concurrent collections. We have already discussed concurrent collection during the collections topics when we were discussing, right? But uh, we will have a quick look at it. So let's start without wasting any time. So here. If an interview, if anybody asks you, hey, in how many ways you can achieve the concurrency, right? What would what would your answer would be? So there are two ways in which we can achieve the concurrency. One is the log-based mechanism. Another is log-free mechanism. So log-based we have already seen so many different ways: synchronize, reintroduce, stamp, read-write, semaphores. All this we have seen already, but there is another way, log-free mechanism, right? In this, we have put logs, right, to make sure that only one thread comes into the critical section. But in the log-free mechanism, which helps to achieve concurrency, but without using any logs, log-free. So definitely, which one is faster, log based or log free? Definitely, this is faster. But remember that this log free mechanism is not an alternative to log based mechanism. This log based mechanism can be used at very uh, different scenarios where we have lot of complexity, where we have lot of business logics. Lo this will comes into the picture. Log free mechanism is used very specific area very very specific use case i would say that okay i will tell you about that use case slowly when we will go into the further of this video but there is very specific use case only in that case you can use log free mechanism and in that case you can achieve faster result than log log based right but apart from this specific use case log based mechanism is something which helps you so that's why I wanted to clarify that it is not an alternative to log based mechanism, but it is one of the way to achieve the concurrency for some specific use case. We will see that. Okay. So which operation or which technique is help to achieve log free mechanism that is CAS operation compare and swap and Java provide these four classes which uses this technique, right? And helps to achieve the concurrency. But before I tell you about this CAS operation, before I tell you about the CAS operation, I want you to have a, just remind quickly about the optimistic locking, right? So you know, right? Optimistic locking. In the previous video, I have told you about the optimistic locking or it is uh, it or I would say that not optimistic locking. I would say that optimistic concurrency control. Optimistic concurrency control because it's also a lock free. It also a lock free protocol. And also what happened in the optimistic is remember. Let's give one minute to quickly remind you because this is very, very important to link with CAS. Right, because both are lock free protocol, right? So let's say you have one row in a table. So this is, let's say, a uh, roll number. One, two, three, a student is Raj, right? This is name and this is row version, row version one. Now let's say there are two thread, thread one, thread two. Both read roll number one, two, three, one, two, three. Both read this same row. Now they have recorded the row version. Row version was one at this when it reads. Row version was one when it reads. Okay. Now what it done is it made it modify something. Let's say from uh, Raj K. It has put the change the name to Raj K. And it has modified it to Raj A Raja. Right. So they have certain uh, modification is done on the name. Right. And now they are trying to update the DB. 
okay now let's say thread one coming first so this is going first right so this is going first update the db so it will try to let's say it will run the query update this table right you update your table what it will do it will set your name to let's say raj k right where roll number is one two three the roll number is one two three change its name from raj to raj k and your version row version should be one what was the row, row version when it read this row one so now it will run this update query update this row right change raj to raj k right where roll number is one two three and the row version is one so this will get success yes row version is one roll number is one two three it will change this to raj k so here when the first when the first thread updated the successfully this row it also up increment the row version it also increment the row version so now when the thread to running this update query update the table name raja roll number is one two three with row version is one so it will say that yes roll number is one two three does row version is one no row version has already been changed who changes thread one change it because when it any update operations it does any update any change modification on this row happens the row version get incremented so now here when the thread 2 is trying to update this it says that hey still row version is one no row version has been changed this means that somebody has changed this value in the meantime when it reads and it when it about to write it in between mid somebody has changed this value now what it has to do it has to again read it so now when it again read it what would be the read uh, row version value 2 now it will up modify it and now it will again run this update query with row version now 2 and when it try to update now it would be able to update that hey row version is 2 roll number is 1 2 3 change it to raja and also increment the row version by 1 3 so you got it this is optimistic concurrency control now let's comes to this cas compare and swap this technique is also exactly the same as optimistic locking but it's a low level operation what does it mean it's a low level operation means it is supported by cpu in all modern cpu this operation is present cas operation right it's atomic what does it mean that atomic means single unit no matter how many cores this cpu has one core two core three core four core cpu and if multiple threads are running in parallel then also it provide atomicity of this operation which operation cas operation no matter core one core two core three multiple threads are running this cas operation is atomic and all modern processors support this operation cas operation compare and swap technique right so what actually this cache operation is? So here, this cache operation has involved three main parameter. Memory, expected value, the new value. Here, let's say this is my memory. Uh, this is my memory, M1, right? And I have variable, let's say X value is 10, right? Now, let's say that uh, this cache operation, right, accept three parameters. One is memory. Second one is expected value. Third one is new value. So now what this cache operation does is, so first, this memory, it will load the variable data, right? So where the variable is stored. So from this memory, it loads this data, variable data. So it loads, load or read variable from memory, let's say M1. Second, what it will do? 
it will compare second part is compare compare of what the data stored in this memory and the data which you are expected to be is it same or not compare memory data versus expected value if they are matching or not if they are not matching means something has been changed if it if it is matching then what it has to do is update the new value to this update new value to this memory so this has been changed to whatever the new value you wanted so that's why the name compare and swap so what it will do is from this memory it will first read the data then it will compare it with the expected value what the expectation is if it matches then only it update this memory with the new value so this is this isn't it very similar to optimistic locking in the optimistic locking itself when you run this update query you tell that okay this is the row version which i am expecting it to be if this row version is the same this is my expected right and this is the present in the db or you can say that let's say in memory this is present in the memory this is my expected if this matches then only update the new value then only update the new value right so you can say that optimistic locking is inspired from this cas actually so cas compare and swap operation is a low level operation which works inside a cpu so it's a cpu operation optimistic locking mostly works with db optimistic concurrency control works with db but in cpu has this cas operation right and your code like in java there are is uh, classes like atomic integer atomic boolean it helps you to access this cas operation you should be asking hey shan what is aba problem aba problem can happen so what does it means that let's say this memory has this x value as 10 and uh, what cas says that okay this memory m1 expected as 10 this is your expected and this is your new value new value i wanted to put let's say 12 this i wanted to put right so first read m1 then compare m1 value with expected and then update if matched okay now let's say that thread1 wanted to run this right m1 10 12 now let's say that some operation has changed it to 12 after that some operation has changed it back to 10 and now thread1 is running but the thread1 when it read it was 10 this value but here if you see that read m1 compare the m1 value it is again 10 does it match with the expected yes so it will change it to the new value now let's say new value is 13 so it will change it to 13 but here one issue is that the expected 10 is not this is actually the this one it has changed over the time some threads has changed this value but somehow the latest value match with the expected that is known as aba issue in the cas so this is easily resolved with adding a version also version number with the memory so that's why this aba problem is easily resolved using version or time stamp with this memory data also so 10 when it added it version was let's say its version was 1 when 12 was added it was version was changed to 2 when again 10 was come it was version was 3 so now here this 10 with version 1 was coming so but now this is 10 with version 3 this doesn't match so update will not happen 
so i think you might be relating that hey both are very similar right optimistic uh, concurrency and this okay now we know that how the cas works now let's say little bit talk more about atomic variables now what does atomic means atomic means single or we can say that all or nothing okay so now let's say that when i say that uh, int counter some variable equals to 10 this is atomic right it is a single operation it's a single operation no matter how many threads will execute this it would be consistent but consider this example consider this example i have created a shared resource class in this i am created one variable counter and i have one increment method which does counter plus plus very simple and this get method which return this so i created an object of this class shared resource now i am calling this increment method 400 times resource dot increment and doing get so till now i have only one thread this works fine works fine and what would be the output output would be 400 right why because only one thread is running calling it 400 time right but remember this this is not atomic this is not atomic operation why let's expand this plus plus so what would when you do counter plus plus it include three step first load counter value second increment it by 1 third assign back so it's it's equivalent to like counter equals to counter plus 1 so first load the value then add 1 to it increment it and then assign back so it has this three operations and this three operations are not atomic right they are not a single unit now let's say that what will happen i have two threads thread 1 thread 2 right so currently let's say counter value is let's say currently counter value is 0 and let's say thread 1 thread 2 both runs in parallel load counter value both runs it it will read counter value Zero. It will also read counter value zero. Both incremented by one, so counter value is become one, one, and assign back. So what would be the counter value now? One, but it should be two actually, right? So that's why I told you that this is not an atomic operation. This is not thread save. So this is the same thing which I did. Let's say this four hundred times. I divided into two threads. So the same example. Now this four hundred, I created two thread. This thread one is running two hundred time. I created another thread which is running two hundred time. So two hundred time it is calling this increment method. A uh, thread two is calling two hundred time this increment method. Right, and I have started both. Now here, because of this issue, this is not atomic. This is not a single unit. this is a problem that two threads when it load the counter value they might read the same value increment it by one and overwrite assign it so there might be some loss of data and that's what actually happen when i run the output 371 comes instead it should have come 400 right but why it comes 300 because this is not atomic operation it is not one single operation there are it is a three steps process and they are not atomic they are, they are not thread safe so we have to make it thread safe how two solutions we know one is using lock like synchronize let's say if i put a synchronize over this increment method it the problem will resolve right if i put this synchronized 
then no matter how many threads would be when thread one thread two try to increment right only thread one only one thread will go inside it only one thread will complete its operation then only another thread will go inside it so lock is one of the solution but there is another solution which is lock free operation like an atomic integer so second solution is using lock free operation like atomic integer atomic integer internally uses what cas now you already know what cas is compare and swap so here i have changed the shared resource this integer to atomic integer now this my counter is the atomic integer i have assigned it with the zero initially now when i am doing increment now i am not doing c plus plus i am doing like counter plus increment and get there is a method increment method present inside this atomic now i am doing increment using that now what would happen now let's see the code okay now let's say i am changing it to atomic integer let me little bit increase it okay now let's say atomic integer initially i assigned it with zero now instead of doing counter plus plus i want to do counter dot increment and get so this increment will increment by one if you have to increment by a specific value there is a method which we can assign we can add that value add add and get it will add that much right but if you want to increment only one so this method we can use but now here if you go inside this method like if you go inside this what it is using compare and swap it using what compare and swap so first this is like your memory what is the expected you wanted and what is the value you wanted to update so here atomic can be used in which use case read modify update whenever you have this use case simple use case read then modify and then try to update you can use atomic okay so here when we did uh, counter plus plus right here so counter equals to counter plus one so i told you right it include three step one is read the value modify it add plus one and then update in that case only atomic can be used and since there it is lock free it is faster initial atomic integer which i passed is zero right so this is a value here if you see that this atomic integer this is the value which you will get set first and it's a volatile i will tell you what volatile is but first let's understand atomic first and then i will come to this volatile understand this this value is initially set with this new atomic integer so this is an atomic integer class atomic integer and the value is set to 0 and this is my memory this is my memory it is present 0 this well is just nothing but a reference to it let's say that this well is reference to this memory okay let's understand that now what i am doing is we are doing increment and get right now if we go inside this increment and get method let's go inside this increment and get what it is doing it is doing do first it will get this value get this value so what it is doing it first do 
let's say uh, v or let's say expected read value this is our value variable it read this value variable and since this is marked as volatile it will always goes to a particular memory and then reads it right so just remember that it is reading from memory not from cache right so read value variable okay now it doing while not your compare and swap operation this is your memory comma this is the expected and the new value it sends so this is the memory this is your expected and this is the new value which you wanted to set till this cache operation is not success a thread will continue to try doing this so now let's say that what would happen is you did increment and get so this method incremented get what is the delta delta is nothing but a plus 1 right so here what it is doing is read the value from the memory what is the value it read what the value it read from here zero so you are expected is here zero now it is calling the cache so here if you see that this atomic integer is providing you and a way to access the cpu level low level operation cache operation which provide the atomicity so it is passing this cache till this uh, memory what is the expected is 0 and the new value is delta is plus 1 so 0 plus 1 so this right so that is what is doing right well plus delta delta is it send 1 increment and get right plus 1 so it send 1 now internally cache you know that how it works so it will first cache will do what cache will do first so cache will do first load data from this memory so what it will load from this memory it is currently present 0 Zero. Second, compare it with expected value. Expected is this. So zero and this zero both match. Zero equals to equals to zero. So this is your expected, and this is the value it read from memory. If this matches, yes, it match. Then it will update the memory with the new value. Update. memory with new well so it will update it with 1 it will change it to 1 right but now let's say uh, some scenario let's say that some scenario uh, okay now let's try to do the same rough work but with scenario that something has been changed something has been changed in mid <clears throat> okay now let's say that there are two threads thread 1 thread 2 okay both threads call this increment method at the same time both threads call this increment method at the same time right so this increment method this is actually the increment method now both threads thread 1 thread 2 comes over here so both will read the value from the memory right what was the value from the memory is that this is zero both will read the zero right so both thread 1 thread 2 read expected is zero expected is zero okay now they are performing cache operation so there is a cache operation now this is cache operation is atomic thread 1 thread 2 wanted to access it but we know that cpu provide the guarantee that this cache operation is atomic so only one thread can go inside now let's say thread 1 
is going inside. So thread one, you know that what cache will do. Cache has three step. So here in the cache, what it will do? It will first read data from memory. It which is comes at currently zero, and then it will compare your expected with the memory value. So expected is what expected is zero and in the memory, it was also zero. So it will update. So it will update it to one or let's say some version. So we'll let I'm keeping upside the version, but let's say value is updated. Thread one is success. Now thread two is going inside this cache operation. Now thread two is doing this cache operation going inside, read the data from memory. What is the data in memory is now one, one compare the expected with the memory value expected is zero, but in the memory, it is one. Does it match? No, it doesn't match. So what it will is this will return false. This will return false. It fails. And when it falls, it will go back again. It will keep on trying till this cache operation is success. So now it will read the value from the memory again. So E is now memory is one. Now it trying to perform a cache operation again. So it will read from one expected is also one, one equals to equals to one, then update increment is now two. Right? So you got it right. How this cache operation is helping and this increment and get is internally using nothing but a this compare and swap. This is a native method which is implemented in C++ or maybe C. We don't have access to that, but Java provides this functionality uh, through this atomic class that we can access this CPU operation. Okay, so there are different, uh, you can have like atomic integer for Boolean, you can have atomic Boolean, atomic long and for objects, any object you can do atomic reference. Right, but Again, this is its scenario or it's very, very limited. So whenever you have a scenario like read, modify, update, only in that scenario, go for atomic. Otherwise you have to go for lock. Okay. I think atomic should be clear, right? Now many engineers get confused with atomic with volatile atomic with volatile. Okay. So first of all, this is provide threat safe operation. This is nothing like a no relation with threat safety, no relation with concurrency, or you can say that not threat safe. So here, what volatile actually is. So see, this is your CPU core. This is your CPU code too. E CPU has one L1 cache to internal, or let me put it to like this outside L1 cache, L1 cache, right? Each CPU core has their individual envelope cache. Then there can be like L2 cache. And ultimately there could be a memory, your RAM, right? Let's say that. Okay. So generally, uh, this is the scenario. So here, if you see that volatile, when you have, let's say that, uh, this is thread one is running over here. Thread two is running over here in this core. And uh, they are working on a variable X, X equals to 10. Now it incremented that X plus plus it incremented like X plus plus. So now it will update it or, or let's say that X plus plus let it become 11. So it will put first into L1 cache X equals to 11 here, right? Or let's say that now after this operation has been done, now thread two is coming and it is reading the value of X read X value. 
Now it will first check. Hey, does L1 cache? Hey, do you have X value present? No. It will go to L2 cache. Do you have this L2 cache present? Uh, X value present? No. Then it will check in memory. In memory currently X is 10. So now this X equals to 10 would be read here. So here if you see that this issue might come because this is how generally in our CPU structure is L1 cache first store the data and periodically this L1 cache gets sync up with each other. But it might be possible that in one core thread has increment the X value, but it has not yet synced up. Let's say this sync up not yet happened. But if in another code, another thread try to read this X value, it will check its L1 cache. Hey, do you have X value? Then L2 cache. Do you have X value? Then it ultimately goes to memory. Hey, do you have X value? Yes, 10. But it has older value. 11 is not there. So what volatile does is volatile make sure that read and write should happen from memory. So when the thread one, when the thread one, I'll trying to do that here. Let me little bit clear it. So X is 10 internally. So, so let now let's say I created this volatile X. Now anybody try to read X, it will not look into this L1 cache, not L2, directly it read from memory. Okay, it is value is 10. So it will modify it and whenever write happens, it will write also happen directly to memory. So it will not update its L1 cache or L2 cache. It will write directly to memory, 11. Now CPU tag is read X value, read X value. Since it is volatile, it will directly read from memory. Read from, read X value. So directly goes to the memory and read it, 11. So now, what does volatile make sure that any changes which are done by one thread is visible to another thread also? Because the read and write directly happens to the memory, not to the cache, right? Because there might be some scenario where the data is present only in the L1 cache, but memory and uh, memory sync up not yet happened. Or we, within the L1, uh, within the cores, L1 cache is not yet synced up. In that case, other CPU core, other thread might read the stale value, right? So you understand that what actually volatile means, but this is nowhere related to provide a thread safety. Atomic operations is like provide a thread safety. Multiple threads are like running in separate, like they are not interfered between each other. I hope it is clear. Don't mix atomic and volatile both. Volatile is just to make sure that any read or write to a variable happens directly from memory so that any changes done by one thread is visible to another thread. But it doesn't guarantee that the concurrency properly. Concurrency is uh, guaranteed by atomicity. Through what? Through CAS operation. Is it clear? I think, I hope I am able to clarify you the proper CAS operation and how this atomicity works, this atomic integer. So this, if you understand atomic integer, atomic boolean, atomic long, you can practice it. It is exactly the same. Okay. Now let's see the concurrent collections. So see concurrent collections, I have already explained you that. So this is uh, so you remember, right? In the Java concurrency during Java con uh, collections video, for each when I for each collections when I was uh, sharing, I have also told you that. Okay, let's see this part. Uh, here I told you, right? For whatever the collections which we have seen, like priority queue, what is their respective? thread safe version and its examples also. Array DQ, this is the respective thread safe version and its example. So we have already covered this, right? But I just wanted to show you that for each of this, we have already seen what are the thread safe version. These are already thread safe. So there is no thread safe. These are already thread safe. For rest of them, I have already shared in the 
collection bar what are their thread safe version but here i just wanted to pinpoint that so this all collections these are their concurrent collections alternative priority queue priority blocking queue like this right if you understand priority queue linked list this is also exactly working the same but here i want to show you uh, show you that what actually they are using to make sure that it is concurrent so priority blocking queue let's see that priority blocking queue so priority blocking queue when you are trying to add any item internally what it is using reentrant lock so it is using lock linked list uses concurrent linked dq so concurrent linked dq right so here when we are trying to add an item what it is doing is here here if you say there is no lock then here is say that cast next so here it goes inside it uses compare and swap so it uses compare and swap operation to bring the atomicity so this is lock free this is cast and operation this is uh, reentrant lock so you got it right so different collections they are concurrent collections some uses lock free some uses uh, some lock like synchronized reentrant lock but i think when you now look back and go in deep and try to practice you will make sense that, okay what is reentrant what is compare and swap operation right how it helps to achieve us the concurrency even though they are not lock right so do practice it if you have any doubt let me know okay guys thank you bye